once again a warm welcome to Flight Sim and other stuff and this is the start of the tutorials on using the bay ringers and I apologize to anyone if I got the pronunciation wrong hey I'm British we just do not do foreign languages and it's the X-Touch Mini so you may have seen in one of the news items I showed you how I got it mine configured to work with the fly-by-wire Airbus. I've also got configurations that make it work with the GN530, the 1000, the G1000, even the G3000. So I use the Stream Deck for push buttons and changing views and other things, and for rotaries and for some push buttons as well, I use the Bay Ringer. So that's what we're going to be covering in this set of tutorials. But before we get into flight sim and anything else, uh, you've unpacked the box, uh, you've plugged it into your USB port, and the first thing we've got to do is check that you've got it set up for the way you want it to work. So let me jump down into this screen here, and you're going to need to download some software. Now I will... Uh, put links to the download page for Bay Ringer in the show notes below. And I've got to say, it is not the most. It's the most. It's not the most elegant of websites I've come across for downloading software. So you will come to the download section, and I can't give you a link direct to the software. You're going to have to find it yourself. So in here, just type X Touch Face. Mini and enter and here we are lots of software now this one down here is what I downloaded first time all software for Windows and <laughs> it's not I mean there's some good software in there there's audacity and there's all sorts of VST stuff you really want to get into sound editing but that's not what we're interested in we're interested in this download here the editor for Windows. So click that one and download it. Once you've downloaded it, unpack it. So let's get rid of that and unpack it. I've stuck this on my, I can close that window. I've stuck this on my uh, D drive and that's what you'll find there in the unpacked directory. Just double click X Touch XE and in Blue Peter fashion I can <laughs> if I press the right button on my stream deck you will get this. So this is the X Touch editor. And we're gonna use this. In fact let me put that down there. Uh, we're going to use this to program these buttons. Um, not program it for flight sim operation, but just program it so the lights operate and everything else operates the way you want it to. So let me show you around the X-Touch editor. Um, this one here, which you can see, but I can't. So first time you load it up, what you have to do is, first of all, make sure you run the system in standard mode. So make sure that this standard button here is lit. If it isn't lit on your version, click that button first. MC mode is not what we need for MIDI control, which is the type of controller that's going to be picked up by Lorby's Access and O's. And we have two layers. See here, there are two buttons, the A layer and the B layer. So every single button here, those two rows of eight, and these rotary controllers have two functions. They have the A layer and the B layer. So you need to, if you want to, set this up. 
So I'm going to get from the hardware that's plugged in, I'm going to press the get a button and it's going to say, are you sure you don't see that pop up uh, because of the limitations of the way OBS works, but I've got a pop up window that says, do you really want and I click yes. And now I get a pop up that says a layer completed successfully. Please click close again. You can't see it, but I click close. So now I can see how the buttons are configured at the moment. We have a fader. That is this one here. I'm not using that at all in Flight Simulator, but if you want to, to use it for trim or for any other access, you could. These are just numbers um how can i explain it for anyone that's never done midi before um they are just notes so midi notes for musical instruments or volume controls midi volume controls or anything like that um just leave it as default even if you want to use it as a slider you can stay with that on default that's fine there's nothing wrong with that then we go to the encoders and this is a really busy looking screen i think isn't it what you're looking at is the encoders one through to eight. The so one through to eight, those encoders there. And again, we have numbers, channel numbers. That's the MIDI channel it's going to be used. You don't have to worry about any of that. What you might want to change, though, is the behavior of the push button. So we have a push button on each of these rotary encoders. And the world of flight sim, I want them as momentary. So you click it and it's in and out like that. You can change it to toggle, in which case button locks on and the button locks off. So I can't think of any feature. Um, oh, actually, hmm, just had a thought. Perhaps the push and pull. No. no. Um, my suggestion, set them all to momentary. I think when you get it in default, these are set as toggle. So just change all of those to momentary. And down here is the LEDs. Now we're on layer A at the moment. And if you look down here, there are LEDs behind these rotaries. And if I turn them, sorry, my thick hand is in the way but if I turn it you can see as I turn it you get two and then it goes to one and then as I turn it round see the effect there but that's how I've got it set up uh, it's just a visual how you want it to look there are different options here so I've got pan I've got single Pan is what you see at the moment. Single is just a single LED. Ban, well, play with them. If you want to play with the different looks, have different designs. I'm going to show you, I do have two separate designs. I have one set up on layer B as well. So we'll look at that. Under the buttons, again, these buttons are set as momentary buttons. Um, I don't want them as toggle. You could have them as toggle buttons. Press one, press again to take it off. I've got them all set as momentary buttons. I'm trying to think of any controls in Flight Sim where I wouldn't want them. Um, but it's just like a keyboard at the moment, rather than a push switch, push to, push to lock switch. Anyway, uh, there are buttons one to eight. So that is the top row along there. And down the bottom there is a tab taking you to buttons 9 to 16. That is the second row down there. And again, I've set all of these to be momentary buttons. You then have to go back to global and you dump that data back in to the controller. So just click dump. For example, Let's show you on one of those 
encoders. Let's change on encoder number four from pan to trim. I don't know. I can't remember what that looks like. Let's try it. Go to global and dump. And I've got a pop-up window, which you can't see, which says, do I really want to dump this into the controller? I say yes. So now you can see the lights. Look at what they do. Ah, oh, I get it. So I've got a single LED at the top. And then I pan to the right, and you see the LEDs build up to the right. If I take it back to the top and then pan to the left, you now got LEDs panning to the left. So I get it, get it. There's a center position and you get LEDs. I don't want that. So let's just go back to the encoders and put it back to pan. Dump that in. And we're back to normal. So that is layer A with the A light. There. Do layer B. We get from B a pop up window, which you can't see. Which I say yes. And close. And now if I go to my faders, no change there. Encoders. Uh, again, I've set all of these to momentary. You do not have to worry about any of this other stuff. The only time you would ever touch that is if you're into music. But where we are with Flight Sim and Lorby's Access and those, all of that can stay the same because Lorby's just going to read all of these and it's stuff that goes on in the background to identify each button. Again, I've set them all to momentary. And you can see here that I've now got on layer B fan lighting. So on layer B, if I was to turn one of these, you can see what happens is as I turn it up, more and more of the lights, LEDs, the ring light, grows as I turn it up. I quite like that effect. In fact, when we get onto programming the system later on, the way I've got it set up for the Airbus is layer A, all of these, rotaries are used for the rotary controllers on the autopilot panel and you can actually see here i've downloaded and printed off some keycaps here you just pop these old ones off and put these on and these are airbus type controllers it's great because when i'm in vr i get a feel of what is speed what is altitude and what is heading speed Head in altitude. But when I'm in layer B, this one here, I've got all of these set up for the light controls. So I can bring up the backlight there, I can bring up the uh, primary flight display brightness, um, pedestal flood lights, background lights, backlighting on the overhead panel, etc. And all of those are programmed to do that. And this is the stuff I'm going to show you in the next lesson. So, set it all to momentary. Again, on the buttons, we're now looking at layer B. And we have buttons 1 to 8, the top row. Buttons 9 to 16, the bottom row. And those are all set as momentary for me. Do not touch any of the other features on there. Any of the other settings. It's not important. Global. Dump B in. Once you've made the changes. And you're done. It isn't difficult. But I've got to admit. First time I tried it. I got a little bit confused. I got a little bit confused trying to find the right file to download. And I got a little bit confused about what those buttons do. So if you follow this set that all up i'll be back oh sorry that was the air conditioning kicking in god it's muggy around here at the moment yeah so i'll be back uh hopefully tomorrow night and we'll start programming this up with let's start off with something really simple 
like the G530 inside the Cessna. I'm going to do that tomorrow night. Uh, if you've got any questions, just stick it in the comments below. Um, for those that watched the live stream last night, thank you very much. Um, we had... <laughs> I had 19 people watching me make a complete fool of myself. We had a problem with the shared cockpit. I don't know if anyone's read the comments. Um, Rich, who was flying uh, first officer with me, or captain and I was first officer, who cares? Um, he actually had two throttles plugged in, so that's what caused uh, a rather bumpy flight. And yeah. I ended up having to land it and I shouldn't have bothered. I should have gone round, but hey, we did a practice run the night before and it was perfect. <laughs> Never mind. We are going to do some more live streams uh, next week, I think. Let's see how it goes. And I might even do a live stream with configuring these buttons. That way, if you've got any questions and you're watching it, you can uh, ask them then and there, and I'll answer. I was thinking of setting up a Discord channel as well, but there is so much stuff to do. Anyway, I, I rabbit on, as is my norm. Thanks very much for watching. I'll be back soon. Don't forget the news show streams live every Sunday, and we've got some more how-tos coming up. Till then, as usual, enjoy your flying, stay safe, and good night. Bye.